Hey guys, Vincent here. I hope you're doing all right. Today we're going to be talking about shoulder rolls and I have loads of tutorials to be giving you over the next few weeks or the next few months for you to build up your vocabulary about shoulder rolls, but I need to be laying down the right foundations first. So before we even start, let's see how we can and should properly warm up before we engage in shoulder rolls. The way I like to do it, and obviously it's not the only way, is First, mobilizing the head. So you want to go for big circles. I like to keep my eyes open. Just to prepare my brain for the visual stimuli I'm about to offer it. 10 circles each side is a start, but obviously you want to work on the spicy parts if you feel any. And I go up and down. And I try to create this snaky, wavy motion with my neck. And then I can play already with tension, over tensing the neck, or on the contrary, trying to be as loose as possible. And maybe feel already a difference in in terms of where this motion is being initiated versus this one. Then a very good one for shoulder rolls and everything that was going to involve the area around the neck is the figure eight. So imagine you have a pencil at the end of your nose and you're drawing on a sheet of paper here an eight. And you can start very, very small and then grow bigger and bigger. And then swap. You can also do the same thing on the horizontal level, so that would be the infinite symbol. And same idea, smaller or bigger, and swap. It's a really nice feeling around the neck. And should get you prepared in case things go wrong. Because straight off the bat, and that's something we'll go back into in the following tutorials about shoulder rolling, you want to avoid putting too much, if any, weight on your neck when you roll on your shoulder. It's not a neck roll, it's a shoulder roll. So make sure technique is on point. And then sometimes when we get carried over, when the speed cannot be controlled, when we're tired, the neck might get involved in the process and we want to limit this as much as possible. But just to prepare for the unforeseen, it's a good idea to warm up the neck which even if it's not loaded, is going to be put in weird angles like this. Once I've done that, I like to sit in that butterfly position with actually the feet resting under the knees and grab both knees, palm facing, palm of the hand facing inwards to pull against them and stick my chest out. And this allows me, as I pull from one hand to the other, to really mobilize the thoracic spine. So you want to go for big circles here. And some idea, 10 each side would be a good starting point. Then if you watched my public tutorials about the tunnel or the shoulder roll or the spinning shoulder roll, you should already know this, but I'm going to reiterate it right now in case you didn't. One good transition movement between this easy warm up and the actual shoulder roll is the candlestick. So quite simply, you want to start sitting and roll as smoothly and softly as possible on the floor until you feel both shoulder blades on the floor. And from there, we're going to bring the pelvis over the sternum 
and try to bring our feet to the ceiling, extending both legs and the hips here. I see absolutely no problem in you grabbing the hips first for the sake of balance. And we're gonna rock back and forth like this, finding ease and smoothness in the process. Once you have it, you can start playing with arms position and see if the balance is being altered. You weigh, you, you want to note already that the neck and the skull, they might touch the ground, but they're never bearing the weight. So in that position here, I should be able to lift my neck, to lift my skull off the floor. If I can't, it means I'm starting to compress the neck for no reason. It means my technique is not on point and I should abort. Same idea, we go 10, a dozen of them, and then we're gonna start opening the legs. So same motion with the back rolling smoothly off the floor and back on the floor, which is important. Sometimes I see this in class, a very, a very smooth takeoff and oh, a very aggressive landing. No, you wanna be just as soft, if not softer, on the way down. As they say in dance classes, vertebrae by vertebrae. Once you have this, we're gonna start to straddle the legs. So, same candlestick, and here we open. Same idea, grab your bum if you need to balance. You can decide to start bending the knees, and extend them at the end, or start extended already, and open straight away. We're now gonna stop in that candlestick position, and remember, the neck is not loaded. From there, we're gonna go from one side to the other, trying to feel the weight transfer, because there are two main things to know in order for us to classify our shoulder rolls. One, which shoulder we're rolling on, and two, which foot is landing on the floor. Once you know that, you pretty much know where the shoulder roll is going. And for us to really feel what the shoulder is supposed to be doing and how the weight is gonna be transferring across our backs, it's a good idea to prime our brains for that and from the candlestick, transfer the weight from one shoulder to the other. So here, I'm gonna look to the side, try to bring this foot on the same side and in the process, lift the opposite shoulder. Which is not the same thing as me flexing the hip and keeping both shoulder blades down. This is not what we're looking for. We are lifting the right shoulder off the ground as the left foot reaches and lands on the ground. And then both shoulders back on the floor the right elbow goes back on the floor. I look to the right to create some space. Reach for the floor with the right foot. The left shoulder lifts. The left elbow lifts. I push back on the right toes, both shoulders down. And from there, I will redirect you to the tunnel tutorial if you want to be able to do that motion, which involves us going from one shoulder to both shoulders to the other shoulder. And it looks like this. Now we're gonna see how to classify our shoulder rolls. And as I was saying before, you wanna get to notice which shoulder are you starting from, which shoulder are you rolling on, and which foot lands. So, so we can already distinguish the same side shoulder roll, which means I start to roll on one shoulder, I finish rolling on this shoulder, and the foot on the same side of that shoulder is the one that lands first. So if I roll on the right shoulder here, and the right foot is the first one that goes down, this is the same side shoulder roll. Which means, on the other hand, if I roll on the right shoulder, finish rolling on the right shoulder, and the left foot 
lens first, this is what we're going to be calling an opposite side shoulder roll. So starting from this seating neutral position, I still roll on the right shoulder, but I decide to land first on the left foot here. This is an opposite side shoulder roll. Next distinction, what you're going to be doing once the first foot lands and whether you're going to be landing on your back or your belly will help you classify where that shoulder roll belongs. So, in both cases, I have the choice here to anchor this landing foot and decide to either keep sliding it until both hips meet the ground or use it as a pivot to bring my belly button to the ceiling and then sit my bum on the floor. Same idea with the opposite side shoulder roll. From this landing here, I can decide to keep sliding until both hips are on the ground or pivot on that anchored foot and find myself on my back.